This is the fourth part of our saga on the Honda EM600, a roundabout 35 year old generator that Bridget's dad gave me. So there's only a little bit of work left to do on this thing before there's no more work left to do and I can just use the thing whenever it's needed. First of all, we haven't tested the DC output of the generator, but also there's some maintenance work that needs to be done. For example, what I'm doing right now, you can see um, I'm preparing to change the oil. I checked this thing before I ran it for the first time. It had oil in it. The oil looked fine, fairly clean actually. Um, but since I've run the generator, the oil has become slightly darker and between that and the oil just being several years old, uh, who knows when it was last changed, I decided I wanted to change the oil. So mom was very gracious. She donned a pair of rubber gloves and helped me change the oil. I put high mileage 5W30 uh, in the engine. Reason being, I just had that oil laying around. Um, I originally bought it for Bridget's old car, which you may remember had a blown head gasket. It was drinking its own oil and coolant. I bought that bottle of oil to use to top up her car when necessary, but then she ended up getting a new car. So I, I never did end up using that oil. So I figured as long as I had it, I, I'd just put it in the generator. Honda recommends 10W30 or 10W40 in the generator. This is 5W30. I'm not too worried about that. It's certainly going to work better than the old oil um, that, that was in it beforehand. After I finished changing the oil, it occurred to me, geez, I've never opened the air filter compartment to check out the air filter. Well, I'm really glad I did because I opened the air filter compartment and there was no filter in it. I don't know why this had no filter in it. But I'm certainly glad I uh, discovered that because that's, you know, it's not a good thing to run with no air filter. If any debris gets sucked into the carburetor and into the engine, that's, that's going to reduce your engine life. Uh, I didn't have a correct filter on hand. I'm not sure if you can even buy them anymore. Um, so what I've done, at least in the meantime, this may only be a temporary fix, but I took a sacrificial kitchen sponge, uh, cut a hole in it, put it in the air filter compartment and that'll at least help a little bit until I hopefully maybe someday get a proper air filter for it. While I was inside the generator I also discovered that the throttle was sticking a little bit. I took some silicone grease spray, sprayed that a little bit and now as you can see it's working well springing back uh, into the idle position. I have the throttle knob turned all the way down but you can see I can open it up and it springs right back to the idle position when I let go, which it wasn't doing very well before, so that's good. Oh, one final thing. I bought a bottle of Stable and put the, an appropriate amount of that in the gas tank. I figured that would be a good thing to do because Lord knows how long it's going to take for me to run through that gas. Um, and, the, and a lot of the gas, and about half of the gas in the tank is already several years old, so... I thought that was a good idea to do that. So now it's about a month later after I filmed all that. I bought a proper Honda generator DC cable on Amazon. It's just a generic thing. came from China. But this fits pretty much every Honda generator since the mid 80s. Um, and we're finally going to see uh, how the DC output works. This thing does run really, really well, uh, especially for having been stored for half a decade with old gas in it and stuff like that. I'm noticing on idle it's got a little bit of a miss. My guess is it doesn't like how slowly the choke is opening, so I might play around with that in the future. Um, maybe adjust the choke a little bit so that it opens a bit faster and it might be a bit happier that way. So as you can see, I've got a multimeter on the DC output here. No load on the DC output yet, but you can see, like the AC output, the voltage is not regulated. It's, it's, uh, it goes up and down with the speed of the engine, because of course this is a true mechanical generator, not an inverter generator. At idle, about 8, 9, 10 volts, and you can see close to full speed here, we're getting over 20 volts. 
So in this thing's intended use case, which is to charge a battery, you would want to adjust the speed to where the proper voltage is being applied to the battery. And here you can see a, the light bulb that I showed a few minutes ago. This is actually a 12 volt light bulb meant for a automotive troubleshooting light. And you can see the generator loads down a bit, voltage drops a bit when that light bulb is connected. So of course you can use the DC output for more than just uh, charging batteries, but there is uh, a big caution with that. The reason Honda said to only use it to charge batteries was because it's not filtered DC. How the DC output works is they just tapped off part of the AC output coil, shoved it through a diode, and that's your DC output. Uh, so it's rectified, not filtered, so it's half of an AC waveform. So you do not want to run anything more than an incandescent light bulb, pretty much, off this output. If you did want to use the DC output to run equipment, and I say this with no warranty or guarantee that you won't break something, but you could just connect any old 12 volt battery to it, and then the battery would absorb some of the ripple in the uh, DC output and it would filter it a bit and then you could run some equipment on it. Um, you might even try putting a capacitor across said battery to filter it further, although I do not know if said capacitor would alter the way the uh, generator is working and cause any, you know, current spikes or something that could damage it. So it's not something I'm ever going to try. So I've got something different now you can see. It's my Marlboro Power Pack, 12 volt jumper pack. Uh, it's got a 12 volt lead acid battery in it. Let's hook it up to the DC output and uh, use it to charge the battery. Someday I'll, I'll have to put an oscilloscope on the DC output when it's connected to a battery and see if there see how much reduction in the ripple there actually is when it's connected to a battery just to see um, how suitable the DC output might be to run sensitive equipment like for example a CB radio or an amateur radio transceiver maybe you could use this thing to run one of those uh, out in the field as long as you've got a battery connected to it. Something I'll have to test someday with an oscilloscope. Now my jumper pack's already fully charged, so as you can see when I hooked the uh, jumper pack up to the DC output, the voltage actually increased because the jumper pack is probably actually backfeeding a little bit of uh, current into the generator. I turn the light on of the, of the jumper pack there, you can see the voltage drag down a bit. So that's a bit more of a realistic scenario. And there I'm adjusting the throttle to uh, bring the voltage back up. Full charge voltage on a 12 volt lead acid battery, I like to go 13.6 volts. You can go up to 14 without any issue. That's what modern cars float the uh, battery voltage at is 14 volts when the engine's running. And that's about all there is to it. The rest of this video is just me fiddling with the throttle and seeing what effect it has on the voltage while the jumper pack is connected to it and the lights are turned on and off and stuff like that. That's about it. So this isn't our conclusion on the saga of this generator. Uh, there still is more to be done. First of all I want to see if I can replace the uh, pilot light which is burned out, presumably burned out. Um, and I'll go over a couple of other maintenance items, just stuff that I've learned about 
uh, as I've done more research and poked around more on this generator. So there will be at least one more part to this series before I uh, wrap it up and just start using the generator whenever I need it. So enjoy me poking around with this thing for the rest of the video. There's no more commentary. Thank you for watching.